obviously this is the product rule. So we have f prime of x, differentiate the first part, which is 5 times e to negative 2x plus 5x minus 4, and we differentiate e to negative 2x, which is e to negative 2x, multiply by the inner function prime. I highly recommend factoring out e to negative 2x, and then 5, distributing here, negative 10x and plus 8. Negative 10x and plus 8. So, negative 10x plus 13, and e to negative 2x. I would have preferred, this is fine, but you know me, I have a total allergy to negative leading coefficients. But this is fine, of course. Okay, so um, moving on, I'd like to work on a word problem. So, where is my book? Here's my book. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, do we want to heat water? Do we want to warm a frozen package? Do we want to look at population? Any preference? If you have no preference, I'm going to look at population. Any preference? One, two, three. Okay. You, you'll have your choice, um, your chance next. Okay, so we have T of P. Remember measurement units. Time T in month. Okay, so T is in months. I have to take notes when I read the problem. Needed for the population of birds of an island to reach P individuals. So P individuals. Number. Okay, so T of P is 38 multiplied by natural log. Parentheses. 4,500 divided by 7,500 minus P. And they're telling us What? What is this? There is no T. They probably meant lowercase t. Time in months. Or I have no idea what they're talking about here. What is this? What is T? What is T? Uppercase. Time in months. 4,500 to 7,500. I'm assuming that that's lowercase t. 4,500 t less than 7,500. I'm not sure what this means. Uh, actually, it's they didn't mean t. I guess they meant p, of course. Yeah. So P between 4,500 birds and 7,500, and not 7,500, as you see. Okay, fine. So it's a typo in here. So part A. Find T of 5,000, okay. And then 5T prime of 5,000, okay. And explain what each number represents. Fine. Awesome. So can anyone tell us? What does, first of all, t of 5,000 represent? So this is p. t of 5,000. What does it represent and what do we need to do? What will be the measurement unit? Since we are talking about t, what will be the measurement unit? Exactly. So whatever result I get, it will be months. Uh, excellent. How do I get this? What does it mean? What do I have to do? Plug in 5,000. That's 15. it. Awesome. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to go to the calculator. You know me. I love seeing my, my function. Again, since it's just one value, you may not want to do this, but I prefer looking at the function just in case, but maybe I want to go back and plug in more numbers. Who knows? So 4,500 divided by, and I have to have parentheses in the denominator mandatory, 7,500 minus x. Close the parentheses for the denominator and close the whole thing. Be very careful with this. So then we go to second and table. 
and I will plug, uh, plug in 5,000. Yep. Good. So 22.33. That's 22.33 months. Or 34, actually. 22.34 months. Perfect. Okay, now they're asking us to find t prime of 5,000. First of all, how do I find t prime of 5,000? What do I need to find first? What do we need to find first? In order to find t prime of 5,000, I have to find something first. What is it? What do you think? T prime. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. T prime or the derivative. Yes. Awesome. Exactly. This is just a number, so it will stay outside, and this is a factor. Only We only need to differentiate this, because this is a constant times a function. So can anyone tell us how to differentiate this piece? Natural log of a function. How do we do that? I can show the quotient rule. No, not yet. Very good. Very good point. Very good point. First, I have to use this formula. And here I will have to use the quotient rule. I agree. But first I have to use this formula. When I get to this point, then I will use the quotient rule. Excellent. Thank you. Yes. So, first of all, I have to have 1 over this quantity. And then I can flip it, right? Because it's 1 over a fraction, 7,500 minus p times the inner function prime. Careful with this because it does not have a variable at the top. What I would do that with that is this. Change it into 4,500 times 7,500 minus p to negative 1. This will make my life easier. So this is how I will differentiate using this. So I bring down negative 1, so I have negative 4,500 times this to negative 1 minus 1. 7,500 minus p to negative 2 times the inner function prime. Since it's not clear, I don't have enough room, I'm going to finish it up here, but I'm going to write it again. Because it's not clear. It's too squeezed in there. So, t prime of p equals 38 times 1 over 4,500 over 7,500 minus p times the inner function prime. This is what I'm differentiating now. 4,500 times negative 1, negative 4,500 times. This to negative 2, you have to subtract 1 from the power, times the inner function prime, which is negative 1. So therefore, I continue. Stop me if you have questions, please. Now I flip this. It's 1 over a fraction. So I have 38 times 7,500 minus p over 4,500. Negative 1 times negative 4,500 will be 4,500 times 4,500. And times, or if you want, you can bring it down now back, 7,500 minus p, everything squared. So I have this times this times this. There is no need to multiply. Look what happens here. So then these at the top, 38, 7,500 minus p, divided by 7,500 minus p squared. And this is nice. Look at that. Simplifies even more. 7,500 minus p. So without all these simplifications, I would have not, this would have looked much more difficult. So now, this is where I plug in t prime of 5,000. And then we have to real, uh, identify what that means. So, back to y equals. I want to see both functions in there. 
I have 38 and divided by, in parentheses, 7500 minus x, close. And I already have 5000 in there. I don't have to plug in anything. It just will appear for the second function right here. So this is 0 0.0152. Now we have to discover the measurement unit and what it represents. Can anyone tell us the measurement unit for this, first of all? And then we'll discuss what it represents. So back to our original. So the function for 5,000 birds gives us 22.34 months. Now the question is, what is the measurement unit for t prime of 5,000? First, let's talk about the measurement unit. What did we say about the measurement unit of a derivative? That there's two. Yes, awesome, thank you so much. Two. One, the top one coming from the function, the bottom one coming from the independent variable. So let's write the measurement unit first. This over this. This comes from y, this comes from x. T is measured in T is measured in We have it right here. T is measured in Months. Thank you. And P is measured in individual or bird, birds. Good. Now let's find this. So let's identify what this means. What does it mean? It means that this is the rate of change of number of months with respect to number of birds. So when there are 5,000 birds in the habitat or whatever in a region, at the moment when there are 5,000, the number of months per bird, it's a little bit awkward in my opinion, anyway is increasing at 0 0.0152. So this is the rate of change. Of course, instantaneous. Instantaneous rate of change of T with respect to P when P equals 5,000 birds. So that's the meaning of what we just looked at. Thank you for saying the two measurement units, one from the y, that y is at the top always, and x is always at the bottom. OK, now I would like us to continue. And this is, this is chapter 2 is completed. We only look at three sections. That's all we are required to look at in chapter three, in chapter two. Chapter three is a big, big um, topic. So chapter three. So please finish chapter two work in Pearson so you can ask questions so I can help you finish up those pr problems. If you find anything that you wanna bring it to class, please do. So chapter three uh, deals with applications. of differentiation. And you can see, but what was this? Wasn't this an applic? Yes, it was, indeed. So if you want to say more, then you can put more applications of differentiation. And here is one, since I don't have enough, I'm going to move on to the next page. So here's one thing that we are going to discuss in this chapter graphs. 
this is one major topic. The second one is optimization. Graphs, we know what that means. Optimization means finding max or min for functions. Very important. It's a big, big, big topic. As big as trigonometry, as big as calculus, optimization is a big branch of mathematics. Okay, and then we're going to look at something called the related rates. It's another application, and there are other applications as well. I'm going to talk about this when times come. Times we're going to get to that topic. Okay, so first we're going to focus on graphs and uh, applications with max min. Okay, so what do we learn from differentiation? Here it is. Let's suppose we have a function, and here's the function. See what happens here? The slope, slope of the tangent line, stop me if you have any questions, please. The slope of the tangent line, or the tangent line here, looks like this. The tangent line here 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 looks like this. And the tangent line here looks like this. Okay. So notice what just happened. What is the slope of this tangent and what is the slope of this tangent? I want you to say zero, positive, or negative. What is the slope of this tangent and the slope of this tangent? Zero, positive, or negative? Okay. Excellent, thank you very much. What is the slope of this tangent? Zero. Thank you very much. What is the slope of this tangent? Negative. Excellent. What is the slope of this tangent? Zero. Excellent. What is the slope of this tangent? Positive. Positive. Awesome. Great job. So, obviously this is the derivative, right? That's how we found the slope of each, uh, each of these lines. Remember a few minutes ago we, are, we determined that m as f prime of 3 on a previous problem. So when we talk about the slope, we talk about the value of the derivative at a point. So you said it's positive here, positive. Excellent, thank you, brilliant, thank you. But look at what the function does when the slope is positive of, this, of the tangent. What does the function do? What is this? What am I trying to show you? What does the function do when the slope of the tangent is positive? It increases. Increases. Excellent. What does the function do when the slope is negative of the tangent is negative? It decreases. Decreases. And again, increases. So if f prime of x is positive, the function is increasing. If f prime of x is negative, the function is decreasing. So the derivative tells us something about the function. This is the first something. It tells us more than just that. But this is the first thing that it says. So the derivative, the sign of the derivative, to be exact, gives us increasing and decreasing intervals. So this is the first major thing. If I determine the derivative and I see that the sign is positive, I'll say, oh, when the derivative is positive, the function will be increasing. When it's negative, the function will be decreasing. The second major information that we get from the, fir from the first derivative is critical number or value. Some books call it value. Some value. Some 
books call it um, um, number. It doesn't matter. It's not important. What is a critical number or value? A function has a critical number, part A, if f prime of x is 0. At that value where f prime of x is 0, the function has a critical number. And there is a second possibility, just two. If f prime of x is undefined, but f prime, but f of x is defined. So there is no critical number if the function is not defined. So if f prime is undefined at a point where the function exists, that is also a critical number. And now the, the key is, or the question is, what are you talking about? What's a critical number? What do I need to even talk about critical numbers? Here is the reason why we talk about critical numbers. Only critical numbers turn into max or min, potentially. Potentially, not guaranteed. If a function doesn't have critical numbers, it will never have max min. If a function has critical numbers, it may, potentially, it may have max min. No guarantee. So these are the three things that we learned from the first derivative. So f prime of x tells us if it's positive or negative, then I know the function is increasing or decreasing. Number two, gives us critical numbers of functions, either or both, or none, right? Either when f prime is zero, or and f prime is undefined, but the function is defined. And keeping in mind that only critical numbers turn into max min. So here's what we notice here. When we look at this function, do you see a max or a min? 